In this video, I'm going to show you some lesser known things in GD script. This is just going to be inside of scripting, uh, no visuals for this one. First, let's look at a function for doing things with extreme values. So we'll just label this extreme values. So I'll just print these out to the console here. The first function is the max function. You might be familiar with this if you used Python. You can give it some numbers, but you can also give it more than just two. You can give any number arguments here. So if we run this code and we call this function, then you can see it tells us the max value was 234. Similarly, we have the min function. So instead of max, we just say min, and it tells us the min value here was three. Related to this, if we have all of these numbers in a array, Then we can say print array or ar dot max, and it will just tell us what the max value in that array was. And similarly with min, and just increase the font size there for you guys. Next, let's look at the lambdas. So these are like one line functions. So we'll make a separate function for this. So we can just have some numbers here and set that equal to just some random values. So you might be familiar with dot sort. We run this. So I will just comment out the extreme values function. So now that we are running our lambda example, you can see that sorts the numbers. But we can also use a custom sort. So for example, we can do nums dot custom sort custom. You can see this takes a callable. The way that we write those, because this is a sorting function, it has to know how to compare two things. So we have to give it two arguments here. We say func can use x and y. Uh, this is a little bit different than Python. If you've used the lambdas there, you have to actually use the word return here. So we can say return. In this case, let's sort uh, in the opposite direction. So we can say return, we want to say x greater than y because the default is x less than y. So if we run that and print out nums afterwards, you can see our numbers are in reversed order now. Now let's say we want to have all of the even numbers come before the odd ones. We can do that too. We can say turn x modulo 2, so that's the remainder, is less than y modulo 2. There, now you guys should be able to see the whole thing. So if we run that, that gives us all the even ones before the odds. And we can try this, so since we sort them by default beforehand, you can see now it's in sorted order. Evens first, then odds. Now let's look at checking every element in a list for a condition. I will just copy this part, and we will call this array conditions. Let's go ahead and put this at the top here. So we have some functions that are helpful. The any function, and we use that on an array. So again, this takes a callable, which means we can use a lambda. This one only takes a single argument, so let's do that. You can use whatever variable you want here. Just I use x. So the reason this one takes a single argument is because, well, any is just going to check a condition individually against each element, whereas to sort things, you have to know what you're comparing against. So we want to return, in this case, let's check, do we have any elements that are above 7? So if we run that, that is true. We do have an element above 7. 8 is here. But if I was checking if do we have anything above 10, that is false, as we expect. Now, as you might have seen there, we also have the all function. This one checks to see if the condition is true for every element in the list. So for example, uh, we already know this one here. There's nothing that's above 10 here. But even if we checked, do we have anything that's above 6? Then that's still going to be false. Because while we do have 8, that's not true for every element in the list here. So if we do want something that's true for everything, we can say all of these are in fact greater than 1. And you can see that is true. And while we're looking at all these things with the lambdas, let's look at filtering. And let's add some extra numbers here. So when we give an array and then we say filter, again, this takes a lambda. And with this, we can remove things that we don't want. So for example, let's say I only want all of the even numbers. So again, filter only applies to single elements at a time. So we only have to provide a one argument. So to check if something is even, we can use the modulo, that's the percent sign. So we can check only keep things that are divisible by 2. So if we set this function at the top so that it runs, 
to run that, oh, but we have to use the word return. You gotta get used to that if you're used to a Python language. You can see the odd numbers were not kept, so we just have even ones left. While we're at it, so let's look at this shortcut we can use here. If we say nums2, we can just create an array by using the range keyword. Let's say I just want the numbers from 1 to 10. Say 1, 11, because this is an exclusive upper bound. We have all the numbers from 1 to 10, but let's say we only want the numbers that are less than 5, for example. We want to return is x less than 5. Of course, this is just for example. If you actually wanted everything that was less than 5, you would probably just specify 6 here. But again, just example. Now let's look at some ways to easily adjust values. Say we have a variable n, we'll set that equal to 5.2. So if we want to round this, just whatever is closest, standard rounding, we have the built-in round keyword, call this at the top. 5.2, that rounds to 5. But we also have seal, stands for sealing. So even though 5.2 normally rounds down to 5, when you use seal, it always rounds up. Similarly, let's say we had m was equal to 5.8 and we use a floor this is the inverse of seal it always rounds it down so even though you would think this should round up if we use floor it always rounds it down to the nearest integer on a different note from those we can also adjust a value let's say we have a is equal to 5 we can use the lerp function so we say what are we starting at well we'll say that we're starting at a's current value we want to get it up to some number so in this case let's say we're trying to go to 10 but we only want to go halfway so we can say half of that if we print a after this you can see it's 7.5 this is useful if you're running a function in the process so you could just gradually make this go up based on how much time has passed so let's use smoothly transition between values so for for example, if we had for i in range 10, because you can't use floats in these ranges, we could say print if we lerp a. So remember, uh, let's make it that a is starting from 5 again, and we want to go up to 10, but we want to only go some small amount. So we'll say float of i divide by 10. Uh, compared to Python, you have to do it this way where you convert the integer i to be a float value. Otherwise, this would always round down. You can see it gradually goes up starting here. So we go up 10% at a time and we gradually go up. Next, let's look at doing things with random values. Actually, let's call this random value testing. So if you want to generate a random value in a range, that's pretty common in games. Let's say we want to generate 10 of them. Um, by the way, this is another syntax you can use. You can say for i in 10 instead of range 10. Personally, I'm used to the Python way, but we can just show this for example. So we do print randf range, then we specify an inclusive from an inclusive to value. So for example, if we have, I want to get a value from 0.1, 2.5 and we have to put this at the top. You can see these are all in fact values from 0.1 to 0.5. Similar to this we can also use instead of getting a float value we can get an integer value so we put i there and we can say I want values from 1 to 5. Now this might look like it's broken it's like oh why aren't there any two values but this is a pretty small sample size. We put say 50 here and we could even adjust this to be some larger range. And you can see now we have a good spread of values. Just with small sample size, you're bound to get some cases where you don't get any of one of the values in the range. So we looked at this a little bit earlier, but let's look at a few more interesting things with the remainders. So as you probably know, let's start by looping over some values. By the way, you can use print s to put the space between any arguments you put inside of print. So prints. So we can say i mod, actually let's do a 10 modulo i gives us i mod 10. Let's set this at the top. Whoops, I was correct. This should be i mod, let's do 5 instead. So let's look over here. 3 mod 5 is 3. Yep. And when we have 8, then 8 mod 5, the remainder is 3. 
after dividing. But here's where things get interesting. We do this again, but instead we start with some negative values. So let's go from negative 5 to 10 here, and I will comment this one. If you're used to Python, this might not be what you expect. We're getting negative values in our answer from modulo. So if you prefer the behavior from other languages like Python and Java and C Sharp, I believe does it this way, the correct way, or at least the way from those languages that you want, instead of the normal modulo symbol, we use pause mod for positive mod. So let's comment to this example so that it doesn't get mixed up here. So now it's as we expect. When we have a negative one, it wraps to four. So it's like a clock. You go backwards from uh, one, then it goes to 12, for example. So just keep in mind if you're going to use negative numbers and use pause mod, or at least if you want this behavior, then that's probably what you want. We will go ahead and wrap up things there. So I hope you learned something about lambdas and remainders and adjusting values. So if you have any questions, you can join the discord below. Other than that, thanks for watching.